I often look at people and I tell them to close their eyes a moment and imagine over your head at 500 feet an airship that's over eight football fields in size. My name is Larry Ellis. I'm the executive director of the Air and Space West Educational Foundation. We were formed by a group of citizens that were focused on trying to go ahead and save Hangar 1 and trying to preserve it from being torn down by the Navy. Uh, we've been successful in that end. The Navy isn't going to be tearing down the building. However, they are going to be taking off the skin of the building because the skin of the building contains galbestos, which has PCBs in it, and that's running off into the groundwater. We, ins we understand the importance of that, and that's not our battle, but our battle is to, is to save the, the structure from destruction. The Navy was forced not to tear down the building, and they do need to remediate the pollution that the PCBs that are going into the groundwater. The problem right now is an integral piece of the character of the building is the windows, very specifically the windows along the top, which are made of what we call art glass today. There's only a couple places in the country that would be able to make the windows, and, and they cover a huge, huge area. So the concern is, in, in the process of taking off the skin, will the Navy go ahead and destroy those windows, which both have cultural value because of the fact that they are art glass, but they also have visual value in terms of that is part of the place. That's part of the unique character of the building. Because most hangars don't have windows. Most hangars are just simply large domed buildings in which it's very, very dark. What we're proposing is an Earth, Air, and Space Center. STEM Education Center, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math at NASA Ames in Hangar 1. And what we're suggesting is there's an opportunity to go ahead and teach children about the sciences. But in addition to that, it's also an opportunity in the floor space to provide a venue in which the Smithsonian can then bring traveling exhibits west and use that as a distribution center up and down the west coast. We're asking for private endorsements. As we move forward, we will ask for public endorsements. The only reason we can't do that at this stage is some of the things we have in our model might change when we actually go to the large donors and ask them for money. So it's not a case of being exclusionary, it's a case of being able to move the model to the next piece that assures we get as much partnership, both from the standpoint of the cities, but also people that have large sums of money, and then ultimately the community itself. It's a mixture between the place, people, and time that create the fabric of history. And without the hangar, it's very, it, it's very doubtful that it would have been recommended to go ahead and locate NACA here.